Hey guys, my name is David Roach, I'm with Expat Audio. Uh, we make kits and so on for guys that are making pro audio stuff and also dabble a lot with other audio circuits and so on as well. Um, I'm really into automation, jigs, fixtures and things that can make manufacturing easier. I don't have a lot of time uh, outside of my main employment to really you know, be, be sitting around counting screws and so on for everybody. Um, screws are actually a, a, a funny topic for us because if you're making kits, one of the things you always have to bundle are enough screws to assemble everything into the case and so on. Um, so for instance, you know, we'll put together a small kit like this with screws in it, with 25 screws in it, and you know, they've got to sat, sit there and be counted. Well, counting screws is really tough. It's really just boring, dull to sit there, one, two, three, four, and so on. Uh, and so it's really something I want to try and avoid if I can. Um, I also tried weighing screws as well so you know having a set weight and, and trying to wait for it but I still have to sit there going one two three until I hit that weight and so on so a friend of mine on on, on Twitter last year after I tried to build an automated one with a you know a stepper motor and everything that would try and count said why don't you just look at what the pharmacies use for counting pills because they have the same challenge right they have to count 30 pills uh, one for every day you're right, out of a certain size and so on and so that's where this video starts is um, how can I make something simple that maybe I can 3D print that can really speed up uh, bringing this stuff uh, to market, you know, getting it done, spending an evening and getting 50 kits out the door and so on. So, stick with us. So this is a first shot I did, right, and the idea here is that you put the screws in, they, they, they fall through the groove or whatever, right, and they hold them there and then you eventually take them out. But this is actually a bit of a pain to be honest with you. And I was watching some, some, uh, some videos on how guys do these vibration tables and so on, you know, to, to sort parts. And one of the things they said was, you know, you really should look at how, how these parts tend to roll, right, because that'll tell you a lot about their behavior. So I changed the design a little to something a little bit more like this. Okay, so the screws we're dealing with are M3 5mm long screws. Um, there's some demand for 6 as well, but I, I typically you know, uh, offer 5 or 6mm screws with the product. Um, you can see here that the total length is sort of 2.5 plus, plus uh, 5 and a quarter, call it you know, 7.5 to 8. Um, once you've added for 3D printer allowances and so on, you know, the other yeah, and 3D printer. So what I've done is I, I created my design in Autodesk Fusion 360. We start off just by defining a, uh, a square, which will be like the, what it's built into. And let's take it back to here. I extruded down two millimeters, um, just to give me a base so that the screws don't fall through. So we started off with a base um, and then uh, added in a further extru extrusion up. Now that extrusion was eight millimeters. Uh, and that was done, as you saw, for the screw to be able to fit the entire screw in there. And we joined the body, that's important to make one big body because we're going to 3D print this as one, one product. Added a, a single circle. Now the diameter on this is actually 6.3. For good reason, right? Even though that head is only 6 millimeters, uh, uh, I wanted to allow some room for the product to move. Um, so it wouldn't get jammed in there, but also the 3D printer itself, I'm printing with a pretty low accuracy, so I wanted to give it a little bit of room just in case uh, it moves over. The other thing, the other trick that I learned in Fusion is that you can actually create an array after you create one, one circle, for instance. So this array is defined as five up and five across, and I've defined the direction as symmetric, so watch this. If I wanted to make them further apart, I could very easily do it like that. Of course, I'd have to make the actual um, uh, circle bigger and so on, but it just allows me to do a lot of tricks like that, right? So I define them with a sort of equal distance apart and so on. We, I extrude it down. Pretty easy so far. The challenge with a product like this, if you look at how those screws roll around on the table, you haven't got a high chance of them landing perfectly and falling in. So I added a small chamfer, uh, and so now the screws will roll around either at one end or the other, either on the head or at the end of the, the actual screw, and fall in with a little bit of with a little bit of movement. All right, let's see how quickly this can get me 25 of them ready. So a little sprinkle on top. Take over like this. Uh, there's a couple of jams I've got to work out. Come on. But voila, we now have 25. A quick optical look to see. And this next section I've got to work out. 
where we've essentially got 25 ready to rock, at which point I can put them straight in the bag, label the bag, and I'm done. So, suggestions on the back of a postcard and how I can improve the design, guys. This is uh, something really easy. I think I can get up on Thingiverse pretty darn quickly. All right, you guys take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.